everybody and welcome back. I apologise for the slight delay in getting this last episode um, of the, the kind of first uh, series uh, to you. A few little technical problems with my very old camera. Uh, but it's all resolved now so uh, we, can, we can get stuck in. Uh, so just uh, to remind you, hopefully uh, you were following along with the first seven uh, episodes that basically contain uh, the basics of uh, English grammar. Okay, so that's our foundation that we talked about in the first lesson. Before we have a look at that review of those first seven, I just want to uh, address the homework from last week. Well, the last week uh, that we were online anyway. Uh, and that was looking at the difference between the past simple uh, and the past continuous. Now, don't worry if you can't remember uh, what those mean. Those are basically the names that uh, English teachers and anybody interested in grammar gives these things. But basically what we're thinking about is we're taking a verb and we're putting it into the past. And how that looks in English will be a little bit different depending on how the past happens. So the basic difference between simple and continuous is that. Okay. Uh, this is simple and this is continuous. And the shape, uh, the shapes that you can see here are really what tell us uh, how those tenses or how, how, that, how that looks in time. So... Uh, on the board, uh, what you'll see now are the sentences that I gave you uh, in the last episode and what you were going to try and do was to decide which uh, option worked best. Now, in some of the cases, uh, there are kind of two options. You could go either way. You could pick simple or continuous. But the meaning of the sentence in that case, as soon as you change, just like if you change between the shapes, something uh, different is happening. If you change between tenses, uh, the meaning of the sentence may also change, sometimes uh, dramatically. So we're going we're gonna to think about that now. Now, uh, so you should be able to see our five sentences uh, on, 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 on the right uh, here. Uh, the first sentence you can see is he ate or was eating his breakfast at 7 a.m. yesterday and then went for a walk. Okay. Let's think about what that would look like uh, in time. So uh, if he uh, ate his breakfast at 7 a.m. yesterday and then went for a walk, basically what you're saying is that one action happens in the past, it is completed, that's the breakfast, and then something different happens and is completed. And so what we need there in that sentence to, to show that, to kind of transmit that, uh, that message, uh, is two past simples. And you have that with it, which is the past simple of the verb to eat. And then we have it with went, which is the past simple of the verb go. Okay. Uh, if you had chosen was eating, it doesn't really work very well because what the sentence would mean then is he was eating his breakfast at 7 a.m. And then he went for a walk. But there's not really any connection between those two things. Uh, it's, it's really an unnecessary focus uh, on the action uh, of eating. So we, we don't want to go there. You want to make your sentences really in some way as clear. Not so much, I don't want to word, use the word simple because uh, as, we, as we looked at bef uh, before, sometimes complexity and sometimes picking more description uh, is, a, is the good, good thing to do. But we do want to be clear, especially with verbs, as to what is happening in time so that our, the message that we want to transmit gets out there to the other person. So for the first sentence, the best option is going to be he ate his breakfast at 7 a.m. yesterday and then went for a walk. Two completed actions in the past happening one after the other. So completed action, past simple. For sentence number two, what we got is he, she read or she was reading two books last week. Now again, have a think about what you consider this to mean, this sentence. To me, uh, if I said uh, she uh, two books last week, to me that means that she completed those two books last week. That's what she got up to. She wasn't watching Netflix uh, like the rest of us. Uh, she read two books last week and she finished them. That's the sense. Now that doesn't have to be, we don't know that that's completely true. I don't know who she is, but from the sentence, from the sense of that sentence, uh, that's what's really coming across. So in that case, if you're th thinking about things which are completed, and if you're thinking about result, 
especially if you're including a number here, like the number two, that's the result of her week, um, is you're gonna go with simple, okay? So what we have is she read two books last week, past simple again, okay? Uh, that's completed, and it's also giving us the result of the week. Now we'll see um, uh, later on in a later sentence a comparison to that, so just keep that in mind. For sentence three, we have, he played, he was playing in the park for two hours. Now, there are two ways that you can go with this sentence. You could pick the past simple and say, he played in the park for two hours. Really what that means is, it's a completed action, you're just stating a fact about what maybe happened yesterday. However, the four two hours I think is also important. If uh, when you're thinking about this sentence, what you want to do is emphasize the two hours. If you want to focus on duration, this shape, remember, so our continuous look like this, and this shape is really about motion and about time, okay, so duration in this case. So if you want to focus on time, uh, then the best option here is he was playing in the park for two hours. Now, now my focus is on the two hours and the verb reflects that. It helps us to express that idea uh, with grammar. So that's kind of cool. So uh, for three, I'm going to pick he was playing in the park for two hours because I want to focus on uh, the time. Uh, as I said, you could pick played, but it wouldn't focus on the time so much. It would just say that that had happened. So again, it depends what you want to do. With four, now four and five sort of uh, work together, so we're going we're gonna to think about these. With four, we have she wrote or was writing a letter to her sister. As that sentence sits just by itself, we can't see what comes before or after. As it sits just there, I think the best option is going to be she wrote, because what we're saying is that is something which is completed. And presumably, what, what we would imagine is that the letter was completed. That's what the verb kind of reflects for us. So she wrote a letter to her sister. It's done. Five. This is a little bit different. And hopefully you can see the difference between four and five. He wrote or was writing a long letter all day yesterday. And today his hand is sore. Now, think about the difference between four and five now. Five, we've got a long letter and we've got all day yesterday. And because of this all day yesterday, we have a, we have a kind of uh, an implication. We have a, 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 a you know, what, what happens because of that? Today his hand is sore. So if your hand gets sore because you've been writing all day, I think that really is emphasizing duration and effort and some kind of ongoing activity. And what that means is the best option here in five is going to be the past continuous. He was writing a long, day, a long letter all day yesterday and today his hand is sore. So it's emphasizing duration, something which is ongoing. If we wanna sum this up then, the difference between simple and continuous Simple is going to be used for things which are completed, okay, as in uh, she read two books last week. And it's also going to be uh, used for things, so let me find the other, the example, oh yes, so the two books last week would be result, especially if, as we said, you include the number, okay, that, that whatever it is that that's being done. Continuous, so look at the different shape. Continuous is going to be for things that are ongoing. It's going to be a focus on duration, so that means it's happening over time as opposed to an X uh, on our timeline, which just happens, as we said at uh, the last time, just like that. And that's basically the difference between simple and continuous. Now, I haven't written past simple or past continuous because what we want to think about going on to uh, the second kind of level of English grammar is that these ideas, these concepts, we've been looking at them in the past with our homework, but these concepts are true no matter where on your timeline you are. So if I took you into the future, we would also have simple and continuous. If we, we were in the present, we would also have simple and continuous. And these ideas, 
uh, with a little bit of tweaking would still be true. So it's a very, very important concept, this idea of simple and continuous. Uh, and that's what you want to bring forward uh, into, into the next kind of section. Okay. Okay, so review. We're gonna, I'm gonna very quickly whiz through uh, what we've looked at in seven weeks. Uh, the first week we were looking at verbs. And as I said, we were really thinking about this idea of the verb being the heart of your sentence. If you can get the verb right, whatever that means, if it's about meaning, if it's about the shape of it, if it's, if it's telling us about time, if you can get that verb right, your sentence is 50% there. Okay, so it's really, really important uh, idea to focus on our verbs. We also have this idea at week two, we were looking at these rebel verbs. So we've got regular and irregular. Regular verbs follow the rules, they do what they're told, they're quite predictable. Irregular verbs do whatever the heck they like, okay? So they're gonna do strange things, they're going to act uh, in unusual ways perhaps. Uh, when you move them about, if you move them into the past, perhaps they look completely different. Those are a little bit more tricky and you have to be more careful with rebel verbs. Uh, those are our irregulars. Um, but they're still doing the same job of reflecting time and also reflecting uh, how that verb is behaving. So it's just, uh, it's worth paying a little bit more attention to them. Uh, we took those verbs into the past, that was week three. Now week four, five and six, what we were looking at really was a focus on description. In uh, week four, it was this idea of strong and weak verbs. So if you're choosing to use a verb, uh, what verb are you going to choose? And it's about choice, okay, if you're communicating something. So do you uh, choose uh, the word walk or do you choose the word dander? It's a completely different idea, okay? They're still expressing the same sort of physical activity, but a walk and a dander or a stroll um, or a stride are all different types of walk and it's really up to you to decide what, what it is that you want to say. So that was strong and weak verbs. Uh, in week five, we were looking at painting with adjectives. And the key in adjectives are the colors. If you remember the picture that we have by Monet, it's the, it's the colors of language. So uh, if you want to paint with color, if you want to give kind of vibrant description to your language, and also when you're reading, if you want to understand vibrant description, uh, you're gonna to have to start thinking about adjectives. Positive and negative adjectives, of course, can be descriptive. So that's what we were looking about in five. In six, we moved on to descriptive nouns. So uh, this was the idea of um, instead of using the word dog, for example, you're using the word terrier or Dalmatian um, or wolf. OK, so all of those ideas are going to give us um, all of those nouns are going to give us a little bit of a different flavor about what it is that you're going to try and say. And that's about descriptive nouns. Now, uh, in seven, and we talked about this at the beginning of this uh, recording, it was about how verbs move, and that was our continuous and simple. I'm not going to go on too much about that because we've already talked about that. Um, but I just wanted to very quickly give you a couple of sentences which sort of sum up what it is that we've been talking about over these eight weeks. So the first one is just going to be a very simple sentence. So, with this one, we have, I eat food. I'll just grab my red pen. As we said, the verb is the heart of your sentence, so uh, that's in here. Uh, the food, hopefully you will remember, is our noun. Now, uh, that's a very general sentence. Uh, we're not getting a lot of information from that. You can certainly see the activity that's going on, um, and you can imagine that it is... Uh, it's not, you know, you can have a guess, maybe a time, but it doesn't really give us a lot of information. So what we were thinking about in, in subsequent weeks was uh, this idea of picking uh, more interesting verbs. So let's change eat 
to gobble up. Now, what does gobble up mean? Gobble up to me is about speed and perhaps a little bit about greed. Um, and it's different. It means eat, but it's different. It's got that different sense about it. So gobble up now. Gobble up works together um, as a verb. It's called a phrasal verb. A uh, phrasal verb just means that it's a verb with more than one word in it. They're also known as multi-word verbs. But uh, again, don't, those are the words that, those are the names that grammar people and teachers uh, give them. But gobble up, you will understand, means eat. Okay, instead of food, I'm going to be a little bit more um, descriptive about what kind of food it is. Um, and I'm going to pick one of my personal favourites, uh, which would be chocolates. Now, Food and chocolate are both nouns. Uh, and I'm still remember I haven't gone too far away from what I originally said in this first sentence, but now I'm a bit more specific. Now you can imagine what it is that I'm eating. Um, it's not chicken, it's not uh, a roast dinner, it's not crisps, uh, it's chocolate. Okay, so I gobble up chocolate. Um, so I've got my more descriptive verb. And now I'm gonna add in an adjective. And my adjective would be, delicious. So uh, the two sentences are in a very, very general way giving us the same information. We've got eat and gobble up. We've got food and we've got chocolate, but we've changed basically the options, the choices that we've made for those sentences to create something uh, different, something more uh, descriptive, which is a good thing. Again, I'll give you just one more example of this, so we could change the verb again. Stuff my face is a verb phrase, okay? So uh, you can all imagine what that looks like. Uh, and again, that's working as a verb phrase. That means all of these words are working together to express some variation of eat. Okay, so I stuff my face. I'll need a with here, and the with here just holds the rest of the sentence on uh, to, to stuff my face. I stuff my face with, uh, instead of food, I'm gonna go with uh, French fries, and let's have a nice adjective to go with my French fries, and I'm going to pick crunchy. Uh, so again, what we have is a variation of sentence one. That's our noun phrase. That's gonna be my adjective. Uh, all of these are variations of each other, um, but of course uh, they're giving us slightly different uh, pictures that should pop into your head. Uh, all of these pictures will look different. Okay, okay one final example uh, to wrap this up is the difference, of course, between uh, simple and continuous. So just to remind you, uh, I drank a glass of water. That's our simple. So remember, if it's uh, simple, it's going to be something which is completed and we're thinking about a result. So I drank a glass of water, I imagine, in the past. Uh, it's, it's all gone. It's done. Uh, and that is a completed action in the past and the glass of water is no more. Uh, compare this with Uh, again, we're still in the past, we've still got a glass of water, you've still got the same verb, but this time uh, we've got a continuous form. I was drinking a glass of water. Now here the, the, the focus really is on the action, okay? the action uh, which is happening in time. I'm not sure if the glass of water was finished or not, I can't tell from this sentence, and possibly something else interrupted me drinking this glass of water and finishing it. But what I do know from looking at this sentence is that it is a different shape from this first one and that the focus, instead of being on a completed action, is now on the action itself. Okay, so we're focusing in on that action and on duration and that's basically the difference between simple and continuous, which is a very important concept to get right. That's basically it. If you have any questions about anything that we've looked at in the first uh, basically seven weeks, seven weeks of this 101, please send them in to me. I know some of you have been keeping in contact um, by email or WhatsApp. So keep do that. Make sure that you understand these foundation ideas. Um, I can send you out extra exercises if you want. 
What we're going to do next week is we're going to move on from 101 uh, to 102, which is to use everything that we've taken so far and, and, and move that up a level. So we're going to be looking at a bit more grammar, um, how you can use those ideas to express yourself in a better way or to practice uh, reading uh, a little bit more. Okay. So have a good week, everybody, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.